Well, Prague Metal has just been outstanding this year, and I feel as though we haven't been getting a lot of really outstanding retro prog, neo prog, symphonic prog lately, so I've been kind of digging a little bit deep into the uh, the prog sphere to try to find some of the good stuff, and um, hopefully we'll have something here, so let's dive in. Chasing the Lesser Light by Kinetic Element. And before I get into this, I want to shout out uh, Music is a Journey. Their YouTube channel was the one that brought me onto the uh, Kinetic Element bandwagon. Uh, they did a review of this and they shouted me out. So I'm shouting them out as a courtesy thank you for that, for uh, making me aware of this. So thank you. You guys are great. Loving your stuff. Uh, yeah, keep up the great work. Uh, so Kinetic Element, for those of you not in the know, like I was, uh, is a retro neo prog outfit from the United States getting their start in uh, 2006, putting out their first album in 2009, Powered by the Light, uh, putting out another one in 2015 with Travelog, following that up with Face uh, The Face of Life in 2019, and now we have Chasing the Lesser Light in 2023 oh boy um so yeah this is kind of your i don't want to say generic retro prog stuff but like i'm getting elements of like third degree i'm getting flavors of uh like moon letters you know those those kinds of bands that are really passionate about prog music and kind of emulate that uh and i feel like chasing the lesser light from kinetic element does that same kind of thing so i want to talk first about some of the positive things about this record and then i'll talk about things that I, I feel need some improvement, if I'm being perfectly honest. So the first thing that I really like is that, you know, we've only got five tracks across 63 minutes worth of music. So it's just over an hour long. And even though this is, you know, grazing a little bit on the longer side, I always feel like albums, unless they need to be over an hour long, shouldn't be. It never really feels the length, you know, it goes by fairly quickly and a lot of that has to do with the longer stretches of music on here. We have one one track that's 19 minutes and 30, uh, 19 minutes and 52 seconds long and two tracks that are over 10 minutes and they go by fairly quickly. You know, it really doesn't feel its runtime. So I really appreciated that and I really do like how the album itself is structured in having you know, kind of two tracks being the first half and then the three tracks being the second half really provides a, a better framework for approaching this. I also kind of enjoy the concept of the album. You know, it's all about space exploration, uh, man's want and drive for touching the stars, starting with, you know, first stage being the first track being the draw to it, uh, Chasing the Lesser Light being the planning stages and the actual release for the Mooner Landing, Radio Silence being a much more personal track between a father and son, father being on the space shuttle itself orbiting the moon, son being back on Earth, and the connection of, uh, you know, that radio silence when they're going on the far side of the moon. And then the fourth track of We Can't Forever being the mission to Mars and the door to forever being like, where do we go from here? You know, it's it's okay, we've, we've landed on moon, we're planning to go on to Mars, where do we wanna go? Like, where are the boundaries of the human experience? And so really like that kind of framing. Again, the framing of this album, outstanding. Really, really enjoy that. The music itself is not bad, you know, it's it's got some really good retro prog, it's got some really good, um, you know, that symphonic fun styles, you know, there's there's homages to Emerson, Lake and Palmer, you know, the first two track have that really big Mellotron sound that Keith Emerson really loved to play, you know, that Hammond B, the, the organ sound that he is so well known for, uh, it's even got his kind of like playing style, I'm hearing flavors of Tarkus on there, uh, it's, it's very apparent, but it's not completely a one for one, you know, it's definitely more of an homage rather than a ripoff so I really appreciated that even though we've had a lot of records this year that have had blatant ripoffs I'm glad that these boys are much more emulating the sound rather than ripping off the sound I also really like some of the playing styles like I can tell these boys are having a ball I can tell that they are having so much fun playing the music that they love keyboard sounds on here being provided by uh, Mike Visaggio, I believe is how you pronounce it, on uh, the pianos, organs, and synthesizers. Mike is doing a brilliant way of commanding a lot of different styles, 
I wish I could feel more of his own style on here rather than him leaning on, you know, the masters of the past. Like I'm hearing a lot of Keith Emerson. I'm hearing every once in a while a little bit of, of Rick White on here from Pink Floyd. Um, you know, I, I wish I could hear more of his own personality on here. I'm really liking the guitars of Peter Machuchinik, and I believe that's how you pronounce it. His guitar works are very, very nice. I really like how he's... I just feel like I wish I could hear a little bit more of his own personality within this kind of run style as well. The drumming, I feel, from Michael Murray, I, I feel like his grasp is, in it, is not as far as his reach, you know? Like, I feel like he's trying his best to really go for, you know, the big styles of Carl Palmer, and he's just not quite commanding it quite enough. Now, he's able to do a great job of keeping up with all the friends that he's playing around with. You know, he's really doing a good job at all that. Um, but uh, I can see him struggle every once in a while, and I'm just like, oh, man, that's hurting my heart. And Mark Tucko on uh, bass work, love his bass lines. You know, he's got that meeting bass line. It's really high in the mix that I really appreciate. You can feel his ideas. You can feel his presence there. It's just St. John Coleman on vocals. Um... Oh, does he struggle every once in a while? Again, much like the drumming from Michael Murray, where I feel like the 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 grasp isn't as far as the reaches. I just oh, there are so many points where he's trying to hit those notes and he's really struggling, and it doesn't sound good. You know, it definitely doesn't sound good. But I can see that they're all having fun, so that at least helps out a little bit. But I can't say he's got a good singing style. You know, I wonder if he's trying to channel a Peter Hamill, you know, from uh, from Vandergraaff Generator. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, like, in that sense, like, there's nothing new that's really covered on this album. There's nothing groundbreaking on this. If you want some really fun retro prog stuff, you're going to have a good time with this. In the same vein as, like, Moon Letters is, same way that, like, Arabs of Aspect are, the same way that Third Degree is, same way that a lot of those kind of bands are, you're going to have about the same level of enjoyment on here. I just, I just didn't feel as though, hmm... I was just kind of hoping for a little bit more within some of the big crescendos that they're really building up for. You know, like, especially on Chasing the Lesser Light, the title track, the almost 20 minutes, you know, they end with this really big crescendo, this really big triumphant sound. And I'm sitting there wondering, did you guys really earn this? Like, you spent a good 15 minutes building this track up, but I don't feel as though the pomp and circumstance is really deserved, you know? Like, I'm having a good time. The music is really bumping, but, like, the big grandiose sounds that you're orchestrating doesn't really match the vibe that you're putting down, you know? Like, I don't know I don't know if these guys are just... Uh, they need a little bit more practice in building that big epic sound. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but there was just something that felt like it wasn't earned, <laughs> you know? Like, I know that sounds really harsh, but, like, that was kind of my overall flavor of it. And the same goes for We Can't Forget and Door to Forever, the fourth and fifth track, you know, the bigger tracks on the second side. And I really enjoyed those tracks as well. Uh, but some of the big crescendos, I feel like they didn't quite hit as hard as the band was really going for. Now, that being said, Radio Silence was a really great track, and it had a lot of really catchy moments on it, which is really interesting because it's probably the most accessible track on here. And most of the time, the most accessible track is the one that I like the least. But on here, I actually really, really dug it. You know, it's very catchy. I find I'm bouncing along to it. It's reminding me of some of the flavors from Third Degree's Zeros and Ones. Uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, honestly, this is just a big pitch for listening to Third Degree's Zeros and Ones, uh, their one-two punch albums. So yeah, in the end, in the end, what I'll say is Chasing the Lesser Light whetted my appetite for a good retro prog album, but I'm still kind of waiting for the main course in that sense. It was fun. I had a lot of fun. Like, I had a good time with it. If you're a fan of this type of retro prog, symphonic prog, uh, retro um, neo prog, I think you're really going to enjoy it. But for me, I'm still waiting for that big sound, you know? So I will say in the end, Chasing the Lesser Light from Kinetic Element is still one I would stream. This isn't where I would start with my retro prog. As I mentioned, it's a good appetizer. It's whetted my whistle. It, it, you know, quenched my appetite, but I'm still looking for that really big hit. So, yeah. Yeah. If you're a fan of this style of music, I think you'll really get something fun out of it. If you're not, I would say keep looking. You know, this isn't this isn't going to convert anybody to the, con to the retro prog sounds, but... Yeah, there you go. That's what I've got for Chasing the Lesser Light from Kinetic Element. What did you guys think about this album? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, please let me know by commenting down below. And I think that's all I've got for you guys today. 
So thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.